My name is Mark Ellis and I play for Team Discraft and we are here today for a Discraft Pro Clinic. And before this afternoon is out, I intend to actually improve the games of our Discraft volunteers such that they are more likely to throw well this coming weekend. As we know, in developing your game of disc golf, there are short-term advantages and long-term advantages that can be gained. What I'm hoping to do today is well, what we work on is short-term. But let me talk about long-term, because long-term matters as well. What is the fastest way to improve your game long-term, no matter what your current level is? The answer to that is to play with really good players. You don't know what is possible until you see great players throw that shot. And you don't need to throw it to keep up with them until you're on the field with them. So if you play with your derelict buddies, who you beat every day, and you go out and you pummel them again, congratulations, you've won two bucks and you've learned almost nothing. And two years from now, your game is going to be at the same level. So how in the world do you convince really good players to play with you? Well, first, you must find really good players. I recognize in some places in the world that is very difficult to do. But if there are really good players in your area, then it may require things like asking, begging, complimenting, agreeing to play against them for small little bets. I mean, all those sorts of things really can be effective. And that is the best way to have long-term improvement, and long-term improvement even after you become very good. Okay, but today we're not talking about playing with the top pros. Today we're talking about short-term improvement. And the way to do short-term improvement, the fastest possible way, is to improve upon the easiest mistakes you make. There are some shots that are very difficult. You're throwing a 400-foot shot over water. That is difficult. But there are some shots that are easy, like the little 100-foot wide open shot. You should not make a mistake on that shot. If you play with good players, you will find that within 100 feet, most pros get up and down in two shots. They throw an up shot, they throw a putt, it's in, they walk to the next hole. That is true, even if they have to cut the funny little route between trees in, even if they have funny winds or tough tail winds or tough crossing winds, most pros, within 100 feet, they're getting up and down in two shots. That's what we want you to do. Now, in order to do that, there are different shots that you need. Obviously, you need a backhand shot. Most of you probably have practiced that shot more than the other shots in this area. So, a straight backhand shot is useful. But you also need a hyzer backhand shot, maybe a little tougher. You also need an anhyzer backhand shot, much tougher. And because there are times you will be in spots you're not happy to be in, you also need forehand shots. Straight shots, and hyzers, and hyzers. And of course, there are the two really tricky shots. The elevator shot. The shot where you must go over this bush or tree and drop into the basket or in the area of the basket. And that requires you to be able to pop it straight up and bring it straight down. Okay? Those are the shots we are working on. Each of our volunteers uh, has signed up. They found us through our website, discraft.com. Found out we were doing it, signed up, and so they're here. Uh, and thank you, volunteers, for showing up. Let's introduce the volunteers. Uh, my name is J.D. Hazel. I'm from Bowling Green, Kentucky, and I'm not rated yet. I'm Amanda Rabbitson from Akron, <coughs> Ohio, and I have an 807 rating. My name is Evan Bradley from Berkeley, Michigan, and I'm also an 807 rated player. Don Pangali. I'm from Canada. I'm living in Michigan now, and I'm an 850-something player. I'm Scott Bernie Burnham. I'm from Shelby Township, Michigan, and I'm 883. My name is Ryan Miller. I'm rated 905, and I'm attending the University of Wisconsin Madison. Rob Nitsche from Akron, Ohio, 911. Eric Simons from New Jersey, 915. Alan Sweeten from Princeton, New Jersey, and I'm rated 923. Hi, I'm Arthur Pingali. I'm a New Zealander a long way from home in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm rated 933. Today, each of our volunteers has been provided with two of our discs and two very interesting and new cool plastics. One is my favorite disc in the world, the Discraft Rattler. The disc which I believe does a better job of a short range control shot than any disc ever made. And today we're running the Rattler uh, in your hands in rubber plastic. 
This is 100% rubber. And so it's a little softer, it's a little gummier, it's a little flatter, it will also break in faster. That is useful because rattlers take forever to break in, and this one that you have in your hands now is going to break in maybe in a year from now. This will be a nice little flippy one. Otherwise, uh, two or three years from now in regular plastic, it would be there. Uh, the other disc we have is a Challenger uh, Discraft's overstable putter, and this uh, we have just produced in FLX plastic. FLX is a special blend of plastic that is engineered to change less under weather conditions. So typically, as you know, take a regular disc, put it in bitter cold, it is very stiff, it is very slippery. Take that same disc and put it in 100 degree heat and humidity, and it's now gummy like a noodle or something. Well, FLX plastic retains its characteristics, firmness, and grippiness much closer between those huge variations in, uh, in temperature. So, we have for you then a disc which is straight or even a bit understable and a disc which is quite overstable. Why we give you both of these? Because you will learn that certain shots work better with certain discs. No better way to do that than throw the wrong disc on the shot. You quickly learn that. Uh, and you will also learn how to control both. And there's a different way to control those shots. We have, by the way, our volunteer down here. Young man down there is Siegfried Berikoven. No, I didn't make that name up. That's really his name. We'll call him Ziggy for today's purposes. Uh, and Ziggy is our uh, assistant and catcher, although I'm not sure he actually can catch. Let's find out. Okay, the first shot we talked about is a straight shot, a shot that goes out and it should come and float down. Let's see if this will work. The idea of this shot is it goes out slightly nose up. Nose is the leading edge as it flies, slightly up, so that when it stalls, it then drops straight down. The shot of this group that I am actually worst at are the hyzers. So let's see if I can hit them on a hyzer. The people that are really good at hyzers amaze me. Because I can make the darn thing hyzer, but how you get it to stop at this place you want is very tricky. Now let's mess with the anhyzer. Anhyzer is the disc that breaks the opposite direction you expect it to, so it could, should come out, uh, start off on the left, and break to the right. Now you'll notice that there's a huge difference in form between the hyzer, a straight shot, and an anhyzer. With a hyzer, you actually drop your shoulder and come through from low to high. With a straight shot, it's pretty much straight across the body, and with an anhyzer, it's high to low, releasing high, following through low. On a forehand shot, the key to a forehand is releasing flat. And if you release flat, hopefully the disc then follows that motion. Working on an anhyzer, take the wing opposite where you grab and put the wing slightly up and it should create a flight pattern that goes something like that. the toughest of the group for me at least and that is a hyzer and I don't understand why it's toughest but for sure as heck it is <laughs> okay I guess it's easy I don't know how that happened far and away the trickiest of this whole bunch for most people is the elevator shot to pop it high and have it come straight down but when it works it's it's tremendous and it's very fun the value of playing catch is that rather than throw a shot and walk after it, you can throw multiple shots, have your buddy then throw them back to you. It's just hugely more efficient. And rather than throw a shot and walk after it, you can then modify that shot. You have the exact same shot. Have your buddy act like a basket. That is, stand there. Rather than run after, just stand there. That way the next shot, if you missed, you're throwing at the same target, you can make the adjustments necessary. A key to, of course, playing catch, is avoiding injury. And of course the key to not hurting yourself is to pay attention, not catch if it's coming too fast, and also give with a catch. So rather than jumping out to grab a disc, give with it as it's coming to you.
Okay. Uh, okay. So our uh, volunteers, uh, would you please uh, take your spots out in the field uh, so we can uh, show the uh, the folks at home what you have developed. Any comments you have? Yep, I might have to put the rattler in my bag tomorrow. I'm surprised. Okay. Pleasantly. Good. What? Well, the FLX Challenger is definitely the most versatile putter I've ever used. All right. How do you like the, the feel of it? Uh, I love it. I mean, it's a lot more grippier than my ADRs, and then I can control it more because of the grip. Right. And uh, just get a lot smoother release out of it. I thought it was great to throw such an overstable disc and then an understable disc back to back to see how you had to alter the flight. Path. I'll be signing up for another clinic. <laughs> so, our volunteers that came out today have spent roughly an hour playing catch, throwing backhand and forehand and trying the various things. And I think probably each of them would tell you they are better at some shots than they were at the start of this. That's after an hour. But rather than do too much at one time, I would recommend that if you want to play catch, start it. Go 10 minutes every day for the next two weeks. Two weeks from now, you will not recognize some of your shots. Your shots will be much, much better for 10 minutes every day for two weeks.